Hi, I'm Brandon LaBeouf with Noel Tech Training and Consulting, as well as the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. In this installment of our Louisiana Concealed Handgun Permit Instructor Development Series, we're going to talk about the importance of being as up-to-date as possible with the equipment and the gear and the things that are available for people that are going to begin concealed carrying a handgun pursuant to their, their permit. It's important mainly because they are going to look at you to guide them whether you know what you're doing or not. When you're standing in front of them and you're presenting information, there is a, a psychological aspect to that that, is, is, that I refer to as an inferred expertise. Okay, They are going to assume that you know what you're talking about because they don't know. They have nothing to compare it against. Unless you have someone that's coming to you already with a great deal of firearms knowledge and is just kind of going through the technicality of getting a permit, most of the people that you're going to encounter have little to no experience or formal knowledge of firearms, their use, their possession, um, the equipment that goes with it, safety. That, that's what they're coming to you for. So what you give them is what they're going to leave with. And as most of us that have been doing this for a little while know, that's probably all they're going to get. I would say probably less than 2% of the people that I have interacted with over the years initially with a concealed hanging permit course have followed on to do additional training with me or that I'm aware of. And some of these people, they do come in occasionally to the range and I speak to them and they're like, oh yeah, I'm planning on it. But again, unless they have a deep personal interest or desire in firearms, the Louisiana Concealed Hanging Permit course is kind of where it starts and where it ends for most of them. And as unfortunate as that may be, I think it's imperative that as Concealed Hanging Permit instructors, we feed them as much information as we possibly can and then give them resources to go and seek further information should they desire it. One of those things is going to be something as simple as what holster should I get. I mean, we can go over all the gear, picking a gun, picking ammo, picking a holster, you know, what type of iPro and ear pro, all these different questions. But the bigger picture is that if you still think the best holster on the market is a Blackhawk Serpa or the holster, you know, some nylon foldy holster inside the waistband holster that you've been having for, for 15 years as a cop, you, you may want to avail yourself to a little bit more information that's out there. Now, Obviously, the best holster is very subjective. Not only from you know, your position as an instructor, some people may prefer leather, some people may prefer a Kydex or some version of plastic, some people might like inside the waistband, some people might like outside the waistband, some people may want something with no retention, some people may want something with active retention. Obviously, that's gonna have a lot to do with your student. What's their manner of dress, where do they work, what is, how high on the list of priority is deep concealment, you know, did they work in an environment where they really can't let anyone know they have it or do they work for themselves and they can dress however they like. You know, all that plays a role in helping guide them to the gear that may be the best for them. But if you don't know what's out there and what's available, it's kind of hard to guide them. Being in New Orleans, people come into town all the time and ask me, man, where's a good place I could go and listen to some good local music? Well, that's not really an interest of mine. So I really can't afford them any, any, any advice on that. But if they ask me where to go get a good roast beef pole boy, I could certainly point them in a couple of different directions because that's something I have a little bit of knowledge about. And whenever I hear of a new place that, that's opened up that has a you know, good hamburger or a good pole boy or something that I enjoy, I go check it out. So that I can either say, yeah, I tried it, I didn't really like it, or you know what, that place is awesome. So just taking holsters is one thing. As we said, right now in today's market, you primarily have uh, leather, kydex, or a combination of the two, such as like a crossbreed or something like that, crossbreed being an actual brand, or you have a leather backing with a Kydex shell, so you kind of get the comfort of the leather on your body, but the rigidity of the Kydex on top. Of course, you have regular, regular leather, which is, which is great. There's a lot of great holster manufacturers making some good high quality leather. Just make sure it's good high quality leather. In today's market, you're looking at probably in a neighborhood of 65 to 100 dollars for a good quality leather holster um, with kydex you're looking anywhere in the neighborhood about that same price to be quite honest probably between 50 and 80 dollars for a good leather i'm sorry a good kydex holster um, retention right now in the market in my opinion one of the best retention systems out there is going to be the als retention system by safari land you also have the thumb drive uh, from blade tech as well as G-Code, G-Code holsters has a kind of bail system similar to the Safari Land bail system that you've seen on a lot of the more tactically oriented holsters. All those are great. Where is this going to be important for a concealed hanging permit holder? 
Well, retention is not a bad thing in most cases, but also some of your concealed handgun students are going to also open carry. And what I recommend to students is if you're going to open carry, number one, no paddles. Paddles, in my opinion, are not appropriate for defensive use because what's easy on is also easy off. And anyone that spent more than about 11 minutes in jail knows how to take this off of someone. So having a nice top of the line retention holster on a paddle is like putting a bulletproof door in your house and then putting two glass windows on the side of it. It kind of defeats the purpose. Then you're looking at inside the waistband versus outside the waistband, just as a general uh, wear, and of course the location they're gonna carry. All those things, um, their body type, where, where their environment is, what are their daily activities? Are they climbing up and down roofs as a contractor? Are they sitting at a desk all day? Are they a truck driver? Are, are, are they doing something that's gonna require a lot more bending and movement? Um, what's their manner of dress? Are they a UPS driver that's typically wearing shorts so ankles are out the question? And certain, you have to ask more questions from your students typically in order to give them uh, some type of guidance. Um, I try to keep, you know, I have like most instructors with several boxes of holsters that over the years I've either used for specific purposes and either no longer need them or, or very rarely need them or that I've purchased and found either don't work for me or have an inherent flaws. Um, I'm not really going to get into the pros and cons of any specific holsters but just understand what's out there. Things like the G-Code NCOG, uh, the Sephora Land ALS system, um, the Crossbreed line of holsters, uh, Raven Concealment Systems, which has a lot of good inside the waistband type holsters. Those are all kind of currently the cream of the crop by most people's subjective opinion. Again, some people carry their gun in a sock and they're completely comfortable with that. Um, just make sure you, as, as we've said before, make sure you are giving your students information and advising them of options, not making decisions for them based on what you like and what you think works or, well, they're not 20 years. Your 20 years aren't what their 20 years are. We're simply giving them options, maybe seasoned with a little bit of perspective and personal opinion. I recommend most students carry inside the waistband. I carry appendix. That's not going to work for some people. Um, inside the waistband is typically preferred with, again, other um, special circumstances. I look at holsters kind of like I look at shoes. Even men have more than one pair of shoes. You've got tennis shoes, you've got your kind of daily work shoes, you probably have a pair of brown dress shoes, black dress shoes, a pair of sandals, maybe a pair of cowboy boots, a pair of You've got different, you don't wear your steel toe boots every day, but you have them if you need them. It's the same thing with holsters. Is a fanny pack going to be the best way to carry a gun every day? Probably not for most people, but are there times where a fanny pack is the best way to carry in that situation? Certainly. So it's important that we kind of are able to field those questions for our students and that it's coming from a place of current knowledge, not a place of institutional stagnation where we're giving advice based on what we have always done. Um, we want to give information even if it's not the information that's best for us. Think of it kind of like the insurance companies do nowadays. They don't just give you their quote. They give you the quote of them and two or three competitors, even though their quote may be a little more expensive. All right, same thing. This is what I do, but here's some other options that may work for you. So, as always, be vigilant, be prepared. You guys stay safe.